Hey everybody, it is Erin and we are going to do some costuming. So my son came up to me and he said, I want to be one of those guys with a sword. And I'm like, um, what kind of sword? And he said, you're like a knight. I'm like, okay, well we can do that. So I pulled out some colors of Renia foiled paper. And these ones are in the rolls. And this is the gold on ruby. And there is quite a lot of paper in each of these rolls, enough to definitely cover and I will have some left over. I also have black starstruck which is this is an ebony it's so gorgeous this is another ruby starstruck which means it's got a little stars all over it it's so gorgeous and it's the same color on both sides i also have silver and then i also have and i've already delved into this one this is the black glossy and it's got gold on the back side and it's just so cool and then i also have silver and it looks like aluminum foil but guess what it's got gold on the other side so that's pretty awesome so it's thick, it's not like tin foil, and it holds shape, which is kind of fun, but it also has this really cool sheen, and it's thicker and heavier quality, and it doesn't just look like paper, it looks like something cool. So in terms of making, guess what I've done out of cardboard, this is going to be our base, a sword. So I took a giant box. Can you guess what I recently bought for myself? Uh -huh. So I have the box left over from this, and so this is now our shield, and I just cut it into a kite shape, so it's going to be a kite shield. And then I also have my sword, and I wanted to cut it a little extra, so where it would normally fold over on the box, I continued cutting it up, but I'm going to add the hilt onto that, and I did two pieces, and therefore it's not going to be flimsy, because it's going to be glued into place, it's all going to be nice and secure, and it's going to make the sword nice and extra long and make it look like it's a sword, so pit tip but now I got to cover it so what colors are sword normally silver so we can easily put the silver over top and I know this just to give you a size different comparison this is not long enough but guess what I can roll my roll out and I have plenty to completely just to show you cover my sword up look at that I got plenty and I still have some left on my roll there is so much room in this roll. It is a yard worth of foiled paper, which is fantastic. And that is just so amazing that there's so much foil on this. So that, that, that rocks. So what my first job is, is I am going to cut basically to here. And since I need to back it on both sides, but I don't want to see the edges of the cardboard, I'm actually going to flip it the other direction. So I'm going to actually have the gold on the inside and then I'm going to roll over and have my foil. Now, I didn't cut this thing super, so I gotta still kinda clean this up because it's kinda bowed out. I want it to be a little more straight. So that's my first job is kinda straightening out this sword that I have here. And then I'm going to cover this with all of the silver. That's my next job. All right, so now that I've done the main part of my sword, I have a little bit of an overlap here, which is absolutely fine. I didn't want to cut it off. I mean, I could cut this, but then you see it. So I'm using a craft glue to hold the whole thing together, and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of craft glue. And the beautiful thing about the foiled paper is that it's paper, so it molds, but it also will bend. i got to trim this up just a tiny bit. It will bend and kind of hold the shape that you want it to, which is amazing. So I'm just going to fold this over. We are going to put a little bit of something on here to kind of cover up where this is here. Or the other option is, oh wow, look at that, is that you can kind of trim this part off here, get a nice V shape, get the extra paper off that's on the back side. There we go. And so when I fold over, you just see the silver. And this is the back side of the sword. So if you notice, it's got some little bumps because it, it comes to a tapered point, but the front side looks nice and clean because I really made sure that that was down well. So just kind of cover that up. So this is the starstruck in the ebony, which means it's the same color on both sides. And I want to cover up, basically doing the same thing I did for this. I'm going to cover up my tin foil in the starstruck and for both parts, because this is going to, where this bends, it's going to encapsulate that. So that's the first thing I want to do.
All right, so I misjudged the size of my uh, of where the, my son's going to hold the sword. It needs to be small enough. This is just too huge, and it needs to look smaller for the hilt or for the for the handpiece. So the beautiful thing about the silver is that there's gold on the backside. So why not make the handle part actually a little bit different and make it look like it's a cool handle? So I'm going to go ahead and apply some glue because I ripped off the old stuff. So I'm going to reapply some glue. And the cool thing is, is because I already ripped off the backside, there already um, is some paper and I completely cut that so bad. I'm gonna move this down. There we go. So, and this part's gonna get covered up. So all I'm really worried about is this edge, because this is my front anyway, that I want the front side to look good. And now it's coming all the way. And if a little bit right here is being noticed that it's silver instead of gold, I'm not worried. And then just roll this over, re-glue. All right, so these are the two pieces that are going to be for the hilt, which go right in here. And it's going to cover up the part that I kind of messed up and forgot to do that cool handle piece on. So it's going to go right here. And then there's another piece that's going to go right here. And so there's the beginning. I'm going to shift this down just a tiny bit to give them a little bit more of a handle piece. I do want to completely cover up any of this intersection but I want this to be even but this looks like a pretty good handle right here now when I lift this up I'm noticing that there is a little bit of a gap so I'm gonna get a little bit more of some cardboard and then just we're gonna actually sandwich it because this is all the same width of cardboard the good news is I have a giant box and so I have a ton of cardboard left over so all I need is a little piece that way this does not wobble and it actually has some strength basically needs to be is a little piece that goes on the edge so as long as my width and I think I nailed that it's about the right piece I just need a couple little sections just like that that are going to come and they're going to fit right inside here so I got a couple pieces and I'm going to glue it and there's a little bit of a gap I'm not worried so basically I'm going to sandwich the sword right in here just like that so I'm going to go ahead and cover these pieces um, that way it doesn't look like there's a gap of something in there with more of the black. All right, so I went ahead and glued down the bottom of my hilt, and now I have the top part. So I have these little middle, not top right, the middle pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue and this stuff is going to take, it doesn't take forever to dry, but it's not, you know, immediate. It's not like a hot glue gun. It's the second best a hot glue gun. And so then I'm going to place these in here. And the last thing I'm going to do is place my top piece. And I really want to sandwich this in. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's glued all the way across. So apply glue going all the way across. We have a nice full coverage and a little bit in between. Place this piece right on top. Make sure all my other ones are nicely firm in there. There we go. And now we're going to decorate the hilt once it dries up. So I'm going to do something fun. So just leaving it black. It feels kind of blah and plain. So I cut some red strips, but again, it's feeling kind of blah and plain. And I have a whole bunch of these edge punchers. And I thought, well, that's kind of fun. And so this one's just a whole series of little dots. I didn't want to go feminine with flowers or foofy anything. And all this one is, is you punch it and see it goes through like butter. It's really super simple. And then you line up the dots so that they're all lined up again and make sure everything is kind of all in line. And then you punch and look at that cool detail that's on the side there. So I'm gonna do that on both sides of the sword. Oops, I completely missed the middle there. So now that I've done this whole side, trying to decide if I wanna do the whole thing, and I do, I wanna go ahead and do it on both sides. So I'm just gonna flip it over and go ahead and punch. And I'm not too worried about if they're not exactly identical. So I got this really cool detail that I'm just going to add right in the middle there. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. And it just adds something a little different right there in the middle. So every sword needs a little bit of, I mean, I've seen gem encrusted hilts on swords and I've never seen a sword 
for real, but like on movies and stuff, they're always kind of gem encrusted. So I thought, why, why can't I do the same thing? So I got these really pretty gems, but they're not too feminine. They're kind of on the masculine side and they're in white and black. And I thought that was kind of fun with the silver. So it still kind of ties in. And I thought I would do a pattern. And since I have an even amount and I am going to glue, even though they're sticky, I am going to glue them just to be sure safe. All right, so I've lined up the gems that I want. And I still have the exact same amount that I can do on the other side and make it even. But to make sure that they don't go anywhere, as my son is strutting this thing around for Halloween, we are going to go ahead and just add a tiny bit more of our craft glue to the back side. So there, just kind of adds a little something. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side. So I've done the other side. It just adds a little bit of something. If you wanted to add something to the actual sword itself, you could, but I think I'm going to leave it plain. I don't want to glitz and glam it too much because it is for my son and he's not a foofy kind of kid. So now he's got an awesome sword. This has definitely solidified the fact that it's holding nice and strong. It's more for show and I think he's going to kind of wear it on his back and we're going to kind of nestle it inside of the shield that we're going to make in a moment, which is going to be part two. So this is the end of part one video where we made a custom sword and he picked out the colors. He really loved the red and he loved black and then the gold and silver just kind of did its thing. So thanks so much for stopping by. Please subscribe. Supplies are listed below and don't forget to come back to part two, which is where we're going to make the amazing shield to go with this.